In this video, I am only going to use one network. It's made of five groups of 20 nodes and two nodes in the same group have 99% chances to be connected and two nodes in different groups have only 1% chance to be connected. So this network is clusterized uh, by design. It's a very caricatural situation and it's intentional because there is a debate about what is a cluster, what is a community and for the moment, we are just going to focus on a very clear-cut case and see how it unfolds in terms of uh, visuals and clustering algorithms. There are different layouts and none of them is the best or the right one. So you have to commit to an arbitrary choice. Let's look at these different layouts. All the layouts are in this list. And not all layouts are equal. Some of the layouts are just utilitarian. So let me just show them and we can move to another type of layout after that. Contraction makes your network smaller. And expansion makes your network bigger. This is not exactly zooming, it's actually shifting the position of the nodes. Rotate rotates your network. Random layout randomizes the network. And label adjust prevents labels from overlapping. Another kind of layout places the nodes according to their attributes. So it doesn't take into account the links, the topology of the network. Here, uh, the visualization will reflect any attribute of the nodes that you choose to use. Let me put colors to this network. Each of the five groups of nodes has a different color now. The circular layout puts the nodes in a circle and it gathers them according to a given attribute. And here I used the block. So that's why you see the nodes gathered by color because the color comes from the block. The radial axis layout is similar to the circle layout except it stacks the nodes that have the same modality for a given attribute. Finally, the layouts that you are probably going to use the most are called force-driven placement algorithms. They basically work like a physics engine where all the nodes repulse each other, but when they have a link, they get attracted like if it were a spring. The system converges to an equilibrium that depends on the initial starting position. This is basically the same technique as gradient descent. The different algorithms that I'm going to show now are all of this family but they have differences. For instance, the forces used for attraction and repulsion are not the same. The optimizations are not the same. The feature might not be exactly the same. Let me show you an example. The system is relatively stable. I can pull a node. It will come back to its position unless I reach another um, local minimum of energy. So for instance, I could easily rotate the whole network. But I could also flip parts of it. It doesn't care about axes. This feels very intuitive, but it's actually very different from a lot of other visualizations such as bar charts, curves, and scatter plots. This is Frustam and Reingold. You can change the gravity, which attracts all the nodes to the center. If you put zero, it does that. If you put 100, it does this. I like 5 because I don't like it to be too packed. Of course, if I use different random positions, I will have different results. Now let's see if and who. This one auto stops. Now let's check open odd. This one has been designed for huge networks, so it doesn't necessarily look pretty on small networks such as this one. It's interesting to note that this one has five different steps that work like five different uh, layouts that are applied in a row. It also auto stops. Let's see Force Atlas, an algorithm I developed myself.
and this is Force Atlas 2, which is basically the same algorithm but more optimized and with improved settings. If you check stronger gravity, it does this. And there is basically another algorithm embedded within Force Atlas 2 that you can activate by checking the lean log mode. It converges less quickly, but it gives nicer clusters in many situations. Can you tell what these layouts have in common? Well, we can see the clusters. That's what these layouts do. They show the clusters. It means that we see something that comes from the topology, from the links between the nodes. The colors that we have displayed so far came from the construction of the network. So they reflected the groups that we used to put the links between the nodes. But if we didn't know about these groups, could we retrieve them? To do that, Giphy has some clustering algorithms, and their purpose is to find the clusters according to the topology. Let's pretend we don't know what the clusters are, and we try to find them. The first algorithm we have is modularity. Those are the clusters found by the modularity clustering algorithm. It uses an implementation called Louvain. There is another implementation called Leiden also available as a plugin. And this one this time only found two clusters, but actually it comes from a setting that you have to tune. So we were lucky with the Louvain implementation. We were not so lucky with the Leiden algorithm, but we can uh, tune that. And now we see that the Leiden implementation also found our five clusters. Finally, a variant of these algorithms is the girvan newman clustering. By the way, Newman was the one showing the way for these three kinds of algorithms. And this one once again finds our five clusters. At the end of the day, all these algorithms, the force directory pressment algorithms and the clustering algorithms, all agree and they all do the same thing. They find the clusters. That's what they are designed to do. As you have seen, these algorithms are not deterministic. If you run them different times, you have different results, but it doesn't change that they make the clusters visible. Force directed layouts put groups of nodes that are more densely connected together and clustering algorithms finds uh, classes of nodes, groups of nodes that also are uh, more closely connected. So this is what we mean here by cluster. It doesn't look at the attributes of the nodes to retrieve uh, the attributes that we have used here. It ignores the way we have constructed the network and nevertheless, both the layouts and the clustering algorithms can retrieve in some way the clusters. Now, it works like that for this very clear-cut example. If we had a real-world example, it would be very different. And that's for another video.